Hi everyone, it's Tess from brightsparksenglish.com and today I wanted to come and talk to you about tutoring and whether or not having your own private students in China is a good idea, if it's viable. So it's an interesting topic. I've spent the last week thinking a lot about it because obviously it's affecting many of us now. We've suddenly got our jobs taken away from us and we're all thinking, what are we going to do? Some of us have chosen to go down the um, school's route and others are setting up as independent teachers. So this is rather addressing those who want to go independent or are in the process of doing so. So I thought, first of all, I'd just go over the exactly what these regulations are. Why is it that we've suddenly got no work? Now, I'm sure most of us all know that anyway, but just to remember, to remind ourselves, they've banned foreign teachers from teaching core subjects in China. Foreign teachers who are based outside China, that is. That's the first thing. They've banned the use of foreign curriculum. And they've also banned any form of tutoring at all for under sixes. So all our kids under six, not allowed to do that anymore. And they've also banned tutoring of core subjects weekends, holidays, school holidays, national holidays makes no difference, and after 9pm. So that is basically what they've already said they're banning. Now, let's have a think about this. How can it affect you as a teacher wanting to move forward and taking on your own clients, your own students who potentially you taught at the school you worked at? Well, personally, and this is... I. I cannot stress enough, this is my take on things. There is nothing saying that this is gonna happen. This is just me reading between the lines and talking to people who have contacts in China. But basically it go, it sort of stands to reason that the government are gonna go, hmm, do we want this blossoming private tutoring market to continue to grow? Because from what I've seen, there are an awful lot of parents wanting to take on um, and find teachers that they used to work with and if they can't find their teacher they want somebody else certainly I'm finding that I'm sure you are too so there is a blossoming market and this is we are doing something that they want to ban so my thought is that they're not going to let that happen they're going to find some way of making it very very hard for us just to continue teaching in China that's my take on it, because there's an awful lot of us out there. You know, Go Go Kids gone, We um, Wales English is gone, uh, VIP Kids, I think, is now no longer offering summer and weekend teaching. So that's sort of changing. Uh, Landy, I think, da, da, da. we're all being affected by this. So there's a huge amount of teachers coming into the market offering private tuition. I think the government are going to try and do something about it. So, second thing, well, you may be wondering, how on earth can they do anything about it? Certainly, I've been thinking this because, you know, I'm sitting in my little house in the UK thinking, hmm, how can they affect me? Now, I don't know if we as, you know, teachers are, ourselves will be affected, but I think what they will do is to make it extremely difficult for parents to access any form of external websites, content, anything. I think I think personally that's probably the way they're going to go. So yes, of course there are VPNs, but I'm not techie enough, but they could potentially make it even harder or put other blocks on. I'm sure they have the wherewithal to make it very, very difficult for them to do that. And yesterday, just yesterday, I heard uh, a teacher from Wales was saying that she thinks that Classen is gonna be blocked going forward in the next few days. So I think it could happen very quickly. And the other thing that I think could really impact us is WeChat. Now, many of us are on WeChat. Um, some of us have been on there for a long time. Some of us have only been on WeChat recently since all of this started kicking off. So um, many of us have our contacts with parents via WeChat. Um, the problem is, is that WeChat has just up dated its terms and conditions and clearly states now that things could change, things could become paying when they are not. They also say that they could just go, they could close WeChat down. There are two versions of it. There's 
the version Weixing, Weixing, I probably haven't said it properly, which is for Chinese numbers, the Chinese version of WeChat. And then the one we're on um, is for those who have numbers that are not based or registered in mainland China. And it's the WeChat version that could be affected by this. So we don't know that. Will they allow WeChat to continue? Mm, not so sure, because again, at the moment, it's a perfect conduit to put the Chinese parents in contact with us teachers. Do they want that? No, they don't. So what will they do? Will it change? I think it probably will. Don't know when. And again, I have no insider knowledge of this. It's just me thinking, mm, it doesn't make sense that they allow it to continue. So of course, make sure if you are busy building up your Chinese um, student base, make sure you have other contact methods and WeChat with your parents, get their emails or whatever it is, but make sure that you continue to be able to contact them if WeChat goes, which you could overnight. The other thing of course is WeChat has WeChat Pay. And for those of you who have managed to get through the fairly complex ways of being paid by Chinese parents, um, WeChat may figure in there. WeChat Pay may disappear as well. So you may have to rethink how you're receiving payment if that does affect you. Currently, I'm looking into using Stripe um, I think that's probably my way forward, PayPal too expensive, but that's another conversation. So just be aware that WeChat could effectively just be taken down from one day to the next. One day to the next, <laughs> you know what I mean. They could also just make, I mean, I've mentioned WeChat, Pay and Stripe, but they could just make moving money out of China a lot harder for parents. And it will get to a level when they just think it's just not worth it. And of course, finally, the most obvious thing for me is that they will also start really putting pressure on parents not to use us because we're banned, we're illegal, you know, they shouldn't be doing it. So they could potentially, and I don't know how, they could potentially put more pressure on parents to not go down this route and to use the alternatives that companies such as Wales English are offering, which is a stream service with no teacher but AI being used or incorporated in it and teachers not being visible, students not being visible. It's just a recording. That is possibly what they're going to make them do. So that's what I think they could potentially do. Now, what about what you can do? Or what are my conclusions? And I stress again, this is very much just me thinking about it. But if we just have a look at what they're doing. In the last few days, they've said that they're going to cut partnerships with the UK well, US universities and Western universities. Now, they were always a huge amount of Chinese students who'd come over and study in the West and in the US. They are keeping the Confucian and Confucius Institutes open, but they're not keeping the partnerships with other universities in the US or in the West. So that already sort of shows the way that they're going. They've also decided to stop English exams in primary school. They're teaching English, there is English in it, but the exam has disappeared. They have also just said that um, Xi Jinping's thoughts will be integrated into the curriculum from September. So there's all of this, to me, demonstrates that they're going to start going more into them, into a sort of, they don't want us, they don't want us, I don't think, and so they won't make it easy. So, what do you need to do? What do you have to, you know, what have I been thinking about? Because I'm still really dithering. I, you know, I sort of, <laughs> I said, right, I'm going to do this. I'm going to get my parents. I'm going to start teaching. And actually over the week, I've done what I've said I should do, which is to take a step back and breathe. You know, if you've seen my other videos, I'm a great preacher of taking time to think. And I'm actually, the more I think, the more cautious I am actually to proceed at all teaching any of my students, much as I really, really want to. Because... The, the sort of things I'm thinking about is, OK, so how are we going to teach them? So many of you are talking about VUV, Zoom, some of you LearnCube, others Classin. There are there are various platforms that we're all looking at to think, OK, so how can we make this interactive experience as great as possible? But you need to think about, OK, so if China goes down, if I can't teach anymore and I've put all this money into a platform, what am I going to do if I can't use it anymore? So I would sort of definitely suggest you're looking elsewhere than China to build up your students. Don't just rely on those the students in China. Try and find students elsewhere because then, yes, investing in these sort of platforms makes sense. That's the first thing. The second thing is 
well, what about um, the curriculum? Because again, your curriculum, if you're investing in curriculum, is expensive. You know, I was in a meeting yesterday with a great guy talking about um, National Geographic curriculum, reach higher, etc. Now, I don't know what price he would do for us as a group of teachers, but whatever it will be, it's not going to be cheap and we will have to make an investment. But for what and for how long? And what happens if parents can't pay us? And what happens if we can't teach? So it's all these things that are making me potentially maybe overly cautious. And I, I might well see comments below going, what are you talking about? Shut up. <laughs> it'll be fine. And hopefully it will. God, I really hope it will be fine. I really, really do. I'm just maybe overly cautious. And I'm just sort of putting it out there because I, 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 you know, so you can think about how you can really protect yourself from change. The other thing that's making me very hesitant about all of this is, um, you know, personally, I wouldn't want to start teaching parents without having a certain amount up front. So, you know, if I do decide to go forward, you know, I'd ask them to commit to a minimum of 10 lessons and probably bill them monthly and in advance, which is fine. That's sort of doable, I think. But, you know, there's part of me saying, well, what happens if we can't teach them anymore and they've paid for a five, ten lessons or whatever it is or committed to them and oh, we can't do that anymore. How can we refund them? How how can we get around this? And I'm very conscious of these parents having lost a lot of money or many of them have lost a lot of money, certainly with Wales English, maybe with the other schools as well. I've seen Wall Street English today. I've just seen an article saying that they owe both their staff and their parents and students. Yeah, same thing. Lots and lots of money. Some staff haven't been paid for three months. Not good. So just a word of warning, really. That's what this video is all about. A word of warning. Think about how you're going to do it. How can you expand? I think that's the big thing. So, you know me, I try and end on positivity. It's not all doom and gloom at all. I hope, I really, really sincerely hope that this is something that will um, be able to continue. But if it can't, what are contingency plans? You know, make sure you're going out there to find students from all the other countries around the world, because there are lots of them. You really don't need to just work with China, as you probably know. Um, and, and just think think about all these things that we've talked about today that I've mentioned. You know, what, what will you do? Make sure you've got your emails for your parents. Make sure you're protecting your investments and keeping it as cheap as possible for you so you don't lose money if suddenly things all change. I think that's the most important thing. So there we go. That's my thought of the day. Um, I hope it's useful. As usual, leave comments below. I'd love to hear from you. Any suggestions, you know, please add if you know more about this. I'd like, you know, I put this out there, but I really like it as an opportunity for you to put your thoughts down as well and any knowledge you may have. Um, so please feel free. And my email address, Tess at brightsparksenglish.com is all there. Please contact me if you have any questions. Anyway, thanks so much and I'll see you soon. Bye.